if you were standing in this area, generally you would have been okay. Um, but as soon as you kind of pass this area here, it's crazy to think this entire area is basically a giant tomb. Hello, Drugstep here. So I just wanted to say a few quick things before the video started. First thing, I wanted to do like a better showcase of the Frank slide in the area, but it was really, really hard to do because of COVID and everything. And also it was still kind of cold. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I didn't do a, a great walk around of the area. I more or less just kind of went to show the mountain, um, all the rock there. And uh, yeah, but I plan on going back because there are some mines you can go in there and uh, go explore. So when things start opening up more, I plan on going back there and doing a better showcase of it and going into the actual mines that still exist. Obviously not the mines that are where were in the mountain because those were destroyed, but <laughs> but there are mines that like that are like adjacent to the uh, the mountain that you can go into. So I really really hope to do that before I move away from this area of Alberta. Another thing that I want to say is that like I'm not a professional vlogger or even like a professional in any sense when I do this. <laughs> I'm just a guy that likes to make content of any kind and like just likes editing videos and just making stuff. I don't have professional equipment. I just have my phone which has a pretty decent I think 4K camera on it. But yeah, I'm just a guy with a camera that likes going out and making content and uh yeah, so I apologize if it's not like professional styled. Things are going to be a little shaky because again, it's just me holding it. I don't have a, like a stabilization thing or anything like that. So yeah, so I apologize if things are shaky or if anything, you know, seems less than professional. Oh shit, sorry. Um, as you can tell, like me hitting my microphone. <laughs> but yeah, but like I'm not a professional in any sense. So yeah, so I hope you can enjoy the video uh, with this more guerrilla style filming and editing. If you do like this video, and you want to help out a smaller creator, consider leaving a sub. It's completely free. Subscribing to my channel really helps me out, helps me grow, helps me find a new audience. And uh, yeah, if you ever change your mind or you don't like my content, you can always un 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 fuck. I hate stuttering. <laughs> if you don't like my content or like I upload a video that you don't like, you can always un unsubscribe. There we go. <laughs> you can always unsubscribe. And uh, and yeah, and it's uh, it's a free way. Helps me out, and I always really really appreciate it. But without further ado, I've taken up enough of your time, let's get right into the video. Hello world. Oh, hello people. And hello Jujit. <laughs> Alright, today is super, super exciting. Me and Sarah are actually getting out for the first time in like many months because of COVID and everything. Um, it's pretty restrictive here where we live, so yeah. So super excited to actually go out. We're going to the Frank slide today. Um, so come along with us if you want to see how it is, um, learn a little bit about the Frank slide, and yeah, it should be a lot of fun. First things first, I need to shower and shave. I look like a goddamn homeless person. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I need to shave and actually look presentable and not homeless. <laughs> so I'll be right back. All right, now that I'm all cleaned up, let's, uh, let's get our stuff ready to go and uh, go check out the Frank slide. Just gonna get our backpack full of stuff together. And uh, yeah. I don't vlog very often. I don't, I don't ever vlog actually. If you go through my channel, I don't have a single like vlog up there. <laughs> so you have to bear with me while I try and like learn how to do this for the first time. Um, but yeah, hopefully it, uh, it's an okay video. Uh, let's get our shit. Jerry, Bill, George, how you doing? All right, we got our bag. I think we got everything we need. You know where we're going. Let's get some gas, get some food and uh, Let's hit the road. Set the alarm so when it breaks into my house. Alright, we're good. Let's go see the sights.
uh, we're just in the town of Fort McLeod, just uh, stopping to use the bathroom and stuff. We only live about two hours away from Frank Slide, so not too bad of a drive, um, but uh, still need those bathroom breaks. <laughs> And I figured while we stopped, I would do a, a quick rundown of the town of Frank and kind of where we're headed and where we are. So the town of Frank used to be in, well, what's now known as Alberta, Canada. It's where I live. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it, used to, it is in Alberta, Canada. It used to be in what's called the Northwest Territories before Alberta was, you know, called Alberta. It was formed in 1901, uh, a year after they found coal in the, uh, in the Turtle Mountain. And the Turtle Mountain is the actual mountain that came down old indigenous tribes, ancient indigenous tribes like the Kootenai people and uh, other tribes in the area called it the mountain that moved um, just because the sheer amount of um, landslides and rock slides that happened in the area. Turtle Mountain itself uh, is mainly made of limestone and shale so it's really really like that brittle rock that breaks off really easily. So yeah so it was kind of a matter of time before um, Turtle Mountain came down just no one really expected how much of it would come down. From reports, they said that a piece that was uh, like a hundred meters came down. It's known as the biggest uh, rock slide in, in Canada ever since the Hope slide happened. That's the biggest one now, but it used to be the biggest slide in Canada and it is known as the most deadliest slide in Canada. No one knows for sure how many, how many people were killed. Estimates range anywhere from 70 to 200, just because no one really knows how many, how many miners were in the area. There was people camping at the base of the mountain trying to get work. So the numbers mainly come from the families that they counted in the, in the actual town of Frank. It was named after a Henry Frank. I guess he was the one who founded it, and I believe he was the one who also found the coal there as well. So yeah, so and Henry Frank was the one who founded it, hence why it's called town of Frank. Town of Frank now has about 200 people living in it. Um, it's in kind of the border of Alberta close to British Columbia in the mountain area there. Um, so yeah, so that's a little uh, rundown of uh, the town of Frank and kind of where it is and what happened and just a brief little history about it. Um, it used to have many, many people in it. Sometimes up to a thousand residents uh, lived in the town of Frank. So and then after the disaster, they basically evacuated the whole town um, because they didn't know how stable that mountain was going to be after the landslide. Almost at Frank's slide. I just wanted to get a video of this thing. 
Look how cool that is. Huh. Cool. Stuff you see in Alberta walking around. Oh, so sorry, so sorry for the wind. It's really windy. All right, see you later, Kelly. We're in the Lundbrook Falls. There's a really cool waterfall here, so we thought we'd stop by and uh, and check it out. Let's head down these stairs and uh, get a closer view. For anyone wanting the information about where we are, here is all uh, here's all that stuff and the map of Alberta. So I hope you guys are uh, enjoying the video and enjoying my uh, my home province. Um, not only did I want to make a video about the Frank Slide, but also also just kind of like the natural beauty of the place that I live and Alberta in general. Because um, people see Alberta as kind of like a gross place. A lot of oil is made here. Um, and it's actually quite beautiful. Um, so yeah, so let's keep going. Goodbye, Lundbrook Falls. Until next time. We're back in the car. Time to keep on the road to Dufranc, which is actually still a town. Uh, there's about 200 people that still live there. So we're here at the main area of where the slide happened. So a big misconception is a lot of people think, especially in Alberta, um, a lot of people think the entire town of Frank was destroyed, and that's not true. Only the town, part of the town that was closest to the mines um, was destroyed. Frank was a huge town at the time, a very wealthy town just because of the amount of coal that came out of here. And like I said earlier, um, up to a thousand people at one point lived here. So yeah, so it was, a, it was a pretty big place. That right there is Turtle Mountain, and this entire half of this mountain fell into what you see before you. All of these rocks everywhere here is all caused by the landslide. Basically as far as you can see in this area it's just rocks of all sizes and it's uh it's pretty insane the video doesn't do it justice but this mountain is huge like this air this this entire um side is just a massive massive amount and 
it just fell. It just came down one day, four in the morning. And uh, I'll get into some more stories of some of the uh, the heroic stories that happened in the uh, during the slide because there's, there's some pretty incredible stories. The train that basically sped out of the mine as it was collapsing behind it. The brakeman who ran two kilometers straight to try and warn the other trains not to come towards. Not to mention the uh, the famous Frankie slide, the unknown uh, child who was thrown from the window of her house into a hay bale while her parents were getting crushed by their landslide. Um, so a lot of horrific tales and a lot of tales of bravery happened with this place. So yeah, let's check it out, see what we can find, and uh, show you around. It's crazy to think this entire area is basically a giant tomb for hundreds of people. A lot of the people that died in the Frank Slide were never recovered. They obviously couldn't go through all of this rubble to try and find bodies as late as, or as early as the 1950s when they built this road actually through here, um, as they were digging the road, they would find skeletons from the victims of the Frank Slide. So it's quite, it's quite gruesome and quite historic of, uh, you know, how much death happened here and how much they didn't find. Like, look how big that is. Could you imagine that entire huge boulder coming down a mountain coming down from who knows how high up just falling straight down and annihilating anything in its path just everything just would have been destroyed and buried in hundreds of thousands of tons of rock you can even see up there closer to the second mountain how it still just goes. I'll kind of get more into the more of the Frank slide of how it happened. They had no idea how something like this could have happened. Um, they sent in Canadian geologists. Um, and like I said, they thought it was a volcano. They thought it was an earthquake. Not realizing that they were basically mining in one of the most unstable mountains in the area. And local tribes people and tribes did try and warn them by saying that, you know, we call this the moving mountain for a reason. Indigenous tribes never camped at the base of the mountain. They never camped in the area. From what I've read, they called it, uh, like they avoided it like a giant would be passing through, that they would call this area the Valley of Giants because sometimes they would just hear the rocks crashing and it would be so loud. It sounded like giants walking around. Um, yeah, this is, uh, this is the main area. We're gonna go some of the other places here. Uh, there's a sign just up here that we'll go take a look at. And, uh, and yeah. Um, so just for anyone who wants to, you know, do some reading, um, this is the, uh, the sign at the site. Um, and yeah, and, uh, this is probably the biggest boulder that I see in this area. Well, in the general vicinity that we are. Um, just for comparison, you can see how big I am. We're here at the Frank Slide Interpretation Center. It'll probably be closed because of COVID. Um, there was a sign down there and they said it was closed, so we're not expecting to do that. There's a, a great lookout up here that'll kind of look down on, uh, and you can get a really good view of it. So uh, let's go check that view out. It's the, uh, the Frank Slide Interpretation Center. Like I said, most likely gonna be closed. This memorial once part of a lava flow that occurred 93 million years ago. Wow. Memorial for our uh, Royal Northwest Mounted Police here in our old police services. Um, so, for example, in the states, the old police services was like the Pinkertons and the Texas Rangers. Um, here in Canada, we had what was called the Royal Mounted Police, and they were the guys that wore the uh, the red jackets and the weird hats and would be on the horses. They patrolled a lot of this area, mainly because horses were able to get around in this area. There's so many mountains, so many hills and rocks and stuff. It was hard to walk around in general. Um, so the Mounties did a lot of the uh, enforcement for this area. And actually when the Frank slide happened, um, the Mounties came into the town and they provided protection so that looting didn't happen while they were evacuating because evacuations are hectic and they didn't want looting to happen. So the Mounties would come into town 
and then help the bank stay secure and everything else stay secure while everyone was evacuating. But uh, let's take out, check out some of these views. All right, before we go down there, there's some cool signs for anyone who wants to uh, read. Well, I think some of the animals and stuff in here. We got you got eagles here. Um, mining, obviously, because there's a mining town. <laughs> and what's this sign up here say? So? Uh, there's just pretty flowers. Don't break them. Okay, <laughs> good to know. I wasn't planning on breaking any pretty flowers, anyways. Um, but yeah, like I said, we're gonna go down there, get a better view, and uh, I'll see you down there. We're here in a little bit of an outlook, kind of shows the outlook of the uh, the slide area. Some more signs here. Um, again, anyone that wants to read. The old mining town would have been right where that patch of grass is and that water. They would have set up mining camps along there as well as other campers waiting for work. They did that mainly because it was the closest to a water source. Mining, you need lots of water to uh, I'm not a miner, I don't know, I need lots of water. <laughs> but you need lots of water, and also uh, you need water for people to live in general. Um, that entire section was obviously destroyed, as well as the smaller mining town of outskirts Frank here was also destroyed. Um, while we're here, I'll do a quick story that I know of. So you'll see right there is a railroad line. That railroad line would have connected to the mining town or the mining area or the mining village or mining houses of Frank there. And four in the morning when the when the landslide started happening, a train was leaving the mine. And as the train was leaving, they realized behind them that the mine was basically collapsing and it was happening as they were leaving. The uh, engine operator of the train put his train in full speed and basically tried outrunning the landslide, which it did, it successfully outran the entire landslide. Um, his story is that it was a foot behind him, the rocks were falling, falling literally feet behind the train as it was, you know, chugging along, trying to get out of it. So inside the mine here, where this coal seam is right here, the Frank Mine, there were a group of 17 miners that when the landslide happened, it sealed off the entire face of the mountain. They couldn't get out. So what they did is one of the older miners knew that there was this coal seam that ran up to the subsidence pit. And what the subsidence pit was, was basically a coal seam that went all the way down to the Frank Mine and it made it easier to crack through this area. So what the miners did for the next four hours, four to five hours, as they were trapped underground, is they dug all the way up through this coal seam, sticking as close as they could to the seam, because it was easiest to crack rock along the seam, all the way up from the Frank mine to the subsidence pit. And there were 17 miners taking shifts, um, sometimes only two of them at a time could go because of how weak they were, because of the air turning toxic basically from the coal in there and carbon dioxide. Um, Sometimes only two of them could have been digging at a time. But once they finally broke through, it kind of gave them all a bit more energy, a bit more hope. They all kind of um, powered together and they finally broke through the final piece of rock that got them out. All 17 miners that were trapped in the mine survived. As I walk through, I'll try and think of some stories I know of with the Frank slide and uh, kind of tell my uh, stories I know of and um, yeah I'll let you guys see kind of just like the devastation as we walk. Um, there's this whole trail that goes around into the slide area so uh, yeah I think we're gonna do that and uh, bring you guys along for the journey. If you were standing in this area generally it would have been okay um, but as soon as you kind of pass this area here is when you would have start being into danger. Um, as you can see here. So, as the rock slide was happening, there were tons and tons of dust 
being blown about and tons of debris in the air and stuff. Um, it made it really hard for people to see. And coming from Lethbridge, which is where I'm from, which is way, 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 way over there, coming from Lethbridge was a train um, meant to pick up coal and stuff from the mines. And obviously, back in the 1900s, they didn't, or early 1900s, they didn't have radios, um, long form communications, stuff like that. Um, I'll have to, I'll put his name in like text right here, um, but one of the brake, brake men or brake signalmen, the people who basically signaled to the trains to stop, um, ran for two kilometers to try and stop the train coming that he knew was coming because the pat the, the tracks in front were just buried in rocks. There was there was no there was no tracks left. And if he would have stayed where he want where he needed to stay, or really wanted him to stay, the train wouldn't have had time to stop because he would basically would have told him to stop as he was getting to the slide area. So this brakeman or a brake signalman ran for two kilometers straight without stopping through the dust. Um, he couldn't see, he couldn't he didn't he didn't know what was going on around him half the time. And how it's crazy to think that maybe just a few feet below these rocks could be hundreds, maybe less, maybe more. No one really knows of bodies buried that haven't been discovered. Because obviously you can't go through all this rock and find bodies. Um, they estimate about 90% of the bodies that were lost in this area haven't been recovered. Um, on a happier note, there are tales of treasure in this area. When the Frank Slide happened, the First National Bank also half of it got destroyed, and some of the vaults got buried along with it. Um, as they were building the main road through Frank, the new road that you see now, um, they actually had police with them in case they found bank vaults. Um, some people say it's false, some people say it's true. It's kind of a myth at this point. Um, but the police, regardless, um, were here with the construction workers as they're building the road in case they uncovered any of the vaults, any of the money. Um, yeah, just because it, said it is a myth, but you never know. Um, the bank was destroyed, so there could be money. So if you ever want to come to Frank's Slide and go treasure hunting, there could be thousands of dollars here for you. And uh, to a lot of people, I'm sure this just looks like a bunch of rocks, but um, kind of what's it's so intriguing to me is I just keep picturing all of this just falling, like all of this being on the mountain and then just one day falling. Like it's, I can't get over it how much rock is here and how it just goes on seamlessly forever. It just seems like it never stops. There's just rock and rock everywhere. All right. It's just crazy to me to think that this disaster happened and things just carried on like normal things they uh they picked themselves up dusted themselves off and uh kept going even after the town evacuated numbers dwindled but always stayed around 200 people and like i said today the town of frank has about 200 miners families workers living in it um just hoping that this disaster never happens again The safest place to be, coincidentally, it seems to be, was in the mine where the uh, experienced miners were because they weren't immediately crushed because of the uh, support braces and the timbers they had. Kind of ironic that the heart of the disaster was the safest, obviously besides the, town, the main town of Frank that didn't get destroyed, but yeah. I guess I'll tell one more story before we uh, head into the actual town of Frank. Somewhere where we stand would have been houses, um, family houses for the miners, where their families lived. Um, and of course in the middle of the night, most of the miners were sleeping. They weren't, not everyone worked night shifts. Um, like I said, only about 17 miners were working the night shift that were in the mine. There's a story, I forget her name, again, I'll. Put it in text here um, but there's a story 
who people call her Frankie Slide. And it's a story, there's many different tales of what happened with her. There's a true myth, there's a, there's a true story and there's a bunch of myths about her. Um, the myths are that like people found her underneath the support brace of a house. People found her in like the arms of her dead mother. Um, those aren't true. Um, the true story of what happened was as the rock slide was happening, her parents picked up the baby of Frankie Slide, again, sorry, I don't remember her name, her actual name, pink, picked up as a baby and threw her out the window into a hay bale, basically knowing that if the baby was in the house, she would have been crushed. She did survive and went on to write a memoir about, you know, her story and what happened. Her parents and her other four siblings unfortunately passed away, but her family throwing her out the window into the hay bale saved that one child's life. So just a true testament of what parents will do to save their, save their children if they can. Now we're out of the rock slide area, and you can see this is what it looked like before. This is the uh, topography of the place, or what it should have been before the rock slide. You know, just trees and forests, beautiful area, so peaceful and serene. And it's crazy to think just a few feet that way is nothing but rock. Absolutely nothing but boulders and shale. It's, uh, Pretty crazy, crazy place to be in. All right, I have 6% battery. I'm gonna go charge the phone quick in the car, and then we're gonna go in the town of Frank. And uh, the actual like town, town of Frank, and uh, see what's new and different. Um, but yeah, phone's gonna die. I'll see you guys later. And this is the town of Frank now. Um, like I said, only about 200 people still live here. Um, mainly are miners and uh, people that work in the, the mine in this area. Um, but yeah, just a, a little liquor store here and, uh, and a gas station. Um, the town of Frank hasn't really expanded too much since the, uh, since the actual destruction. They've kind of um, stagnated a little bit. A lot of people are scared to live here in general. So yeah, so all we have here is, like I said, these little houses, a liquor store and a gas station, and that's it. So uh, that'll be the Frank slide <laughs> for this trip at least.